Hi, my name is Dave. Today I have a very nice and rare treat for you. This is a spectacular miniature telescope by Jim Riffle. This gives you a general idea of what the thing looks like. It's absolutely spectacular. I'll give you some nice close-ups of some of the features of this telescope here in a moment. And I stop it here and show you how it looks in operation just a bit. Loosen up some clutches. You can see There's a clutch right here for the right ascension. Beautiful. There's the right ascension slow motion. See how that's moving? Now here's something completely unusual. It's the declination. You can see it moving. I'll show it to you from another angle also. This is the declination slow motion. This is very much like it would be on a big scope. This is a 1 12th scale, which is, it would nominally be about maybe an 18 inch telescope or so. It's a one and a half inch mirror in there, about F6. So if this was full scale, it would be huge. It's just a huge telescope, 18 inch or so. And it would have something very similar to this. But in the old days, probably still on the big mounts, they probably still use something like this, a tangent drive like that. Loosen the clutch here, move it around. Let me show you the RA again. Here's the clutch for the RA. This thing is machined beautifully. It's just superb. I have nothing but admiration for a person who can machine on this scale and do such fine, high quality work. By the way, this is not really a model. I would consider it to be a miniature telescope. It's fully functional. So it's not really uh, just a model. Like uh, most of the things that I make are pretty much just models. This is, they are functional. I mean, they have basic operations. This thing is fully functional. It has everything. Now, of course, seeing as how it's not really a model, things don't exactly work the same. For example, this is the focuser for the telescope. <laughs> What's happening inside there, Jim has done a beautiful job machining this thing. The mirror is mounted, uh, and it's when you turn this, it actually moves the mirror back and forth. This, although it looks like a focuser, this is not really a focuser. That part is a model. So it doesn't really work. It doesn't move the eyepiece in and out. Um, Instead, the eyepiece is fixed, and that's how you focus right there. By the way, the thing has a very nice image. I mean, it's a spherical mirror, but in this diameter, an F6 spherical mirror delivers a very nice image. And I was able to resolve at least one of Jupiter's moons the other night with no problem, even with the glare of Jupiter. A few other things that are dead giveaways that this is not a model. Look at the size of these counterweights. Even on a big monster telescope, those counterweights, um, that's oversized. Those would be too big. 
and, and the eyepiece. <laughs> Look at the eyepiece. That eyepiece would be, I don't know, that big <laughs> nine inch eyepiece or something huge like that. Uh, just a monster of an eyepiece. Uh, and it has all the features that you would expect on a big full sized Newtonian telescope on an equatorial, German equatorial mount. It even has, and I'll show you this, this right ascension drive has a spring to handle the backlash, to make sure you don't get any backlash. Uh, on this scale, that's astounding. That would be, you'd find something like that on, on a real one, a full scale one, but on something of this size, it's just unbelievable to see the quality of craftsmanship on this. If you don't know who Jim, Jim Riffle is, he was, uh, he used to own and operate Astro Works, and they made some of the biggest, I mean, the largest uh, astrophotographic platforms, great big fork arms, and like, you know, just gigantic. I don't know what the biggest one was. Typically, uh, on this kind of a scale, um, and uh, he sold those for many, many years. So he was, he, he was working with huge, huge pieces of equipment, huge uh, hunks of uh, aluminum and castings and mirrors and so forth. And, uh, and then he goes to, <laughs> he's also got some very, uh, some other very fine miniatures. I'll give a, I'll leave a link in the description below and he's got some other really really nice miniatures uh, uh, miniature machines he does miniature machine working also check out this declination motion let's see if I can do this <laughs> there's a video online I'll make a link to it a video showing the whole mount with a lot electronic motors hooked up and it, it works beautifully you gotta see it I'm trying to do this manually it's kinda tricky uh, Jim calls this a finger burner cuz <laughs> you're gripping such a little tiny knob there that knob I don't know what it is it's less than a quarter of an inch and yeah I think you can see what's going on there I hope <clears throat> it's just exquisite it's like a little tiny precision piece of wonderment it's just fantastic check out these spider veins this is built just like the real deal those veins are very thin metal. I don't know what thin, how thin that is, but it's very thin metal. Um, there's the secondary mount here, and there are screws attached out here, exactly the way you would do it on the real thing. Absolutely amazing. I've tipped it on side so I can show you this beautiful worm gear. This knob here is the clutch. That's right there. So that adjusts the clutch. There's a little tiny spring washer in there to adjust the friction. Here's the worm wheel and there's the worm gear. And notice, I don't know if I can do it with the pencil, but see the spring there? That spring is keeping the worm in touch with the worm wheel. It's just breathtakingly beautiful. It's just lovely. A real mount of this, of, of the real size, would have adjustable feet. And this one has adjustable feet. Here are the knobs. Those are the little feet, and you can adjust this up. 
a real mount would probably also have giant casters on there. In this case, they would be microscopic, of course. Here's what might at first appear to be a deficiency with this mount. This mount has a fixed latitude adjustment. That is, you can't adjust the, for a different latitude. It's fixed at 45 degrees. Now that's just like the old timers would have done it. I have actually made a couple of mounts like that called pipe mounts. Anyway, you uh, get a 45 degree angle and, and you can get very close to most latitudes with that. But the kicker is with this particular mount, you can put this on a tripod and adjust for uh, much greater la latitudes than that. Let me demonstrate. For most visual work, a uh, 45 degree angle is just fine. It'll do anything you would want to do, even for modest photographic work. But suppose you don't, uh, suppose you want to do astrophotography. Jim's done astrophotography with this mount, an identical one. All you have to do, really, to handle that is put it on a put it on a mount like so, or a tripod like so, and you can adjust for various latitudes. These legs would appear to be castings. They're not. They're actually 3D printed, but boy, they look exactly like castings. Uh, they're 3D printed in a aluminum or alumide, which is a mixture of aluminum and nylon, apparently. Never done any of that, but uh, same for this. This structure here is all 3D printed. It looks exactly like a casting. It's just beautiful, absolutely exquisite. The rest of this is all bronze and aluminum and steel, aluminum tube. Uh, so it's all metal construction here with uh, maybe a couple of knobs that aren't. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this beautiful miniature telescope by Jim Riffle. Thank you for watching.